Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to the Mount Denny Ridge channel. <clears throat> Yet again, I'm back in the garage. Uh, <clears throat> just the other day, I uh, posted a video of me uh, sharpening uh, one of the chains. And I uh, got caught up in a couple other things that we had to put on the, uh, a head and line of uh, my project that I had going on. So I figured I'd bring you guys along for all the random stuff I had to get myself involved in but <clears throat> so today um, still not gonna make it down to the wood yard likely uh, outside we're getting some on and off showers it's showing <laughs> that it's supposed to be uh, pretty consistent heavy showers right now but I guess we're right on the edge of it so uh, without really knowing what's gonna happen <clears throat> uh, with the weather uh, by the time I get done cleaning this saw up, swapping out the chains, um, it could be dumping on us or it might be sunny and birds chirping. So, uh, but for right now, I'm going to tear this uh, saw down, take the bar off, clean it all up, and clutch cover all that, and uh, put on the other chain. And uh, while I have uh, the chain on the bar, I'm going to throw it up in the bench vise. And I'm going to hit the rakers once, and uh, we'll uh, we'll see how that goes when we actually get down there to putting this thing into the wood. Since I've gotten this saw, <laughs> I've hardly even really used it, uh, or as much as I'd like to say uh, I've got a bunch of hours on it, uh, I really haven't. Um, if you guys, hey, or the viewers that have been following me for a little bit and faithfully watching, you know, whatever videos I post, at least some of the video anyway. Um, They'll know I brought this up to my friend Ed's place and um, almost forgot to do it. Um, and uh, I went at a couple tree stumps with it and uh, you know, some of them were successful. Um, I was able to just mow through them in one, one shot with this thing. Uh, some of them not so successful. Uh, there's a couple times I threw a chain uh, off this 32 inch bar um, and uh, what else and then of course you know you catch uh, you know some dirt and debris on the ground and it makes the chain cut like a butter knife so uh, you know at that point then I just go and grab my 460 typically having a fresh uh, chain on it and I would finish up where this thing started um, not to any fault of this machine it's just when you're stumping, that's just kind of the nature of the beast. Uh, Got to bring a lot of a lot of sharp chains with you because you're all well, that's all you're going to be really doing is uh, swapping out chains. And I, I really, I really don't like stumping. I really don't care for it at all. Uh, you find yourself in situations like. Uh, you know, uh, inadvertently, you know, overheating your bar, you know, doing things like that, you know, just trying to, you know, to, to get it, to get the job done. And honestly, it's, it's really not worth the, uh, oh, I just realized that, uh, <laughs> that chain that I sharpened uh, the other day uh, was a 28 inch. That's all right. It's all right. Now I got a. Is that my twenty? Yeah, it's my twenty. Right so we won't be using the Sumara uh, for this cutting session, or at least for the whole cutting session tomorrow. We'll have to see how that goes. But uh, twenty-eight inch bar is just fine. That's uh, plenty of bar for what I do. To be honest with you, um, 
I don't see me having a ton of use on the regular basis for a 32 inch bar. Uh, honestly, it's just a guy thing. It just looks badass. Um, and it runs the 32 inch bar just fine. It runs really, really nice. Um, not so convinced on the weight difference. I mean, I'm sure if you put a I'm sure if you put a, uh, you know, hanging on a scale, I'm sure there's actually going to be a difference. Uh, matter of fact, now that I got this, this is a 28 inch bar. This is a Sumer. Oh God, yeah. Yeah, Th this 32 inch bar is lighter than the stock Husqvarna 28, uh, the X Torque. Yeah, it's uh, noticeably, noticeably lighter which is uh, pretty interesting. Uh, I guess that's why they call it a lightweight bar. There's no kidding. So I'm gonna clean this thing out and uh, I'll be back in just a minute. I'm sure you guys have seen that a bunch of times. Uh, I don't need to bring you along and torture with that. All right, so got her all spiffed up. Funny thing is, I'd rather put it to work in a few minutes. But Teresa, I can see, is out there in the neighborhood trying to get her laps in. Uh, see how that goes. You know, whenever I. Um, you know, do this stuff. Um, I can't remember which way this was. I think the last one I had it. No, it was right side up. Um, you know, when I do this type of stuff where I'm just kind of hanging out with you guys in the garage, you know, my buddies used to, not so much these days. I don't know how much of it happens anymore, but I know uh, my younger years, we, me and my buddies, and their and our girlfriends, you know, uh, spent a lot of time in each other's garages and shops, chilling out, bullshitting, and uh, having some beers <clears throat> and other drinks. Uh, just tinkering with stuff, anything from chainsaws to lowered trucks to lifted trucks and diesel motors and all kinds of stuff. I wasn't as much of a motorhead as the other guys were. I was more into the, you know, the bodywork and the custom fabrication, you know, with doing welding and even some interior uh, stuff, you know, like custom stereo systems, things like that. But boy, we spent countless hours in those uh, spaces with each other just uh, living it up, living the dream. That's why I can't get too mad, you know, with me working as often as I do and as much as I do these days. I kind of played myself to death goofing around my buddies. Uh, probably a lot longer than I should have. So. Doing the impossible game of catch up with life now. <laughs> Everything is looking good. So yeah, it'll be interesting to see how um, how I did on the sharpener. Boy, it feels like I did good, um, but you know, <laughs> you know how that is. Proof's going to be in the pudding. So, <clears throat> so when I uh, tighten my chain, I always kind of rest it on the tip of the bar. Uh, the way it puts upward pressure on the bar. It's just kind of something that I learned from other people by watching. It wasn't really something I was told is the way to do it. 
or anything like that. I just kind of, you know, asked one day, uh, you know, why they did it and they told me because it helps, you know, get the chain to the tension it needs to be at and it'll stay there longer. I, I don't know. I, like I said, that's just what I was told. Um, you know, whether or not, you know, any of that's legit, I really don't know. Um, it seems to work, you know. Um, if I, I think if my first cut with the saw was an undercut from the bottom of the log, you know, this might not uh, seem to work so well. But typically when we're cutting, you know, we're cutting from the top side down. And I did happen to notice, that's a little loose. Um, I did happen to notice that uh, if I didn't do that, pretty much my first cut into the log, or second cut into the log, the chain would have loosened up significantly. Now, uh, kind of, kind of the same, same experience that you have with uh, um, a brand new chain, right? You put a brand new chain in, and you know darn well that thing is gonna uh, it's gonna loosen up on you. So. But after the initial stretch, this does seem to work. Um, it's not hanging. That's got some spring in it. Yeah, so I was pretty bummed uh, when I was doing that project uh, up there for my friend Ed. Uh, you know, cutting them stumps out and stuff. Uh, initially, you know, when I when those chains jumped off uh, the bar down in the stump, um, when I had taken those chains out to put them back on the bar, uh, there was a few drive links that wouldn't no longer drop down into the bar. So initially, uh, you know, because I've never been in every situation before, Initially, I thought maybe the drive links were bent. Um, however, uh, a very good friend of mine, um, he has sharpened a lot of chains. Uh, he used to work for a uh, small engine repair shop and a Kubota dealer, things like that. So he had sharpened his fair share of chains. Um, and, you know, naturally, when you have a lot of exposure to that, you have a lot of exposure to all the different types of things that get dropped off and they ask you if you could fix. So um, I think he had mentioned that he hasn't actually seen any drive links, you know, the dorsal being bent per se, but the one thing that was a very regular thing was the same exact thing that I have where the drive link, when it jumped off the sprocket, it got mushroomed, right? So um, the mushrooming of the drive link or the scar, the nick, um, increases the, uh, how can I say that, the, the width and a very small spot on the drive link and that little burr is what's keeping it from going down in there. That's what we believe in. So, um, you know, we're not really going to know until I get these chains here and really go over them uh, and, and try filing those drive links smooth again to see what happens. But. Uh, yeah, so um, for right now, that's going to be it. And uh, I'll catch up with you guys tomorrow and see if we can get this saw bucking up some of that big ash down there. And uh, there's even some maple, too, that I need to, uh, to buck up and put aside with the machine. Uh, it's kind of encroaching on our trailer parking location down there. And uh, I don't want to be uh, doing that. You know, it's just another place for mosquitoes and snakes and things like that to harbor and you know having the, the girls down there uh, tacking up their horses and stuff uh, next to their trailers it's probably not a good scenario so anywho I will see you guys tomorrow